Hey guys, so today we have my pan those eyeshadows update and I have a very exciting update for you today because I did hit pan on one of my shadows. So that does mean I'm going to be rolling a new shadow to replace that one and then there's another shadow that I've also decided to roll out. So I'll have two new shadows joining our rotation for the month of May. Okay, so here is my quintet of shadows that I was working on in April. Um, the only new one to the group was this last one here, which is Underwater from the Elf, Earth, and Ocean. All the other ones had been rolled over from previous months. So let me go ahead and start by showing you the shadow that I hit pan on this month. It is from my Subculture palette, and it is the shade Mercury here. Now, is this the tiniest baby pan ever? Yes, <laughs> but does it count? Absolutely. So there she is. This has been in the project since the beginning of March. And I have used this shadow 33 times since I rolled it in. One of the ways I used it in addition to as an eyeshadow was to fill in my brows. It's actually a great shade for the brows, so it worked really well for that. And really that I think is how I was able to get so much use out of it and hit pan. Also, this is a very, very soft powdery shadow as are all the mattes in this palette. So that is another factor that made it possible for me to hit pan on it as quickly as I did. So also, I don't think I mentioned this in my last pan those eyeshadows update, but I did hit kind of a bonus pan in this palette back in March. I hit pan on the shade Electric here, which um, I actually hit pan on it like the day after my pan those eyeshadows update, like very, very quickly. I think I used it like one time and there was already pan. So um, that was a shade that I already had a huge dip in previously, but I now have three pans in this palette, which makes me very happy. It's just nice to see some dips and some progress in my eyeshadow collection. So I will be rolling that shade out. I'm kind of ready to move on and you know, hopefully roll in something a little more exciting. So then the other shade that I've decided to roll out, at least for now, is from my Pan That palette. I'm, I'm technically, technically this is a Pan That palette just because I'm trying to hit pan on as many shades as I can this year. And I'm planning on having this palette in my pan, those eyeshadows all throughout the year. This is the ABH Norbina palette. And the shade that I've been working on since the very beginning of the year, yeah, literally since January, since the intro, is the shade Volatile from this palette. And I've used it so many freaking times. Let me let me just tell you how many times. Let me count first. I have used this shadow 60 times, six zero times <laughs> since the beginning of this year. I do have a dip in the shade, but I haven't hit pan on it yet. And I think that is a testament to how different the formulas are between Norvina and Subculture because I was able to hit pan on Mercury in 33 uses. This I've used almost double that and I still don't have pan. So it's just a firmer shadow. Um, I actually do like this one better. I, I find it easier to work with. And I, I actually do think that Mercury can be a little bit patchy on the eyes. So this, I, I do like this shade better. I've used it so much. I use it as a liner. I use it as a crease color, an outer corner color. So many ways. I don't use it in my brows because it pulls a little bit too pink for the brows. But um, that, yeah, I, I'm just ready to roll in a different shade from this palette to start working on. I already have pan on almost half of the shades in here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six out of 14 pans already. So I'm gonna roll in one of the shades that doesn't already have pan. We'll randomly select that in just a moment. But those are the two shadows that I am gonna be rolling out. And then I have three other shadows to update you on. We have two single shadows. I have Silk from Natasha Denona. And I really like this shade. I've used this a total of 13 times since I rolled it in in March. So I am going to keep it in for at least one more rotation. And I would like to hit pan on this. I do have a dip in here. I don't wear this kind of shade all the time because it is just a very, very warm kind of orangey copper kind of shade. And I don't always find that the most flattering on my eyes, especially as an all over the lid shade, but I've been incorporating it as much as I can. I have worn it all over the lid a few times. Um, in fact, I'll pop a photo on the screen of one look that I did with this shade. I think it might take a while longer. I feel like I could probably hit pan on this in a month if I really like put my mind to it, but I'm not going to force myself to use a shadow every single day just to hit pan on it if I don't actually want to. So I'm trying not to force it, but I also do want to continue working on it. So then the other single I have in here, shadow number four, is the single shadow in the shade La Playa from ColourPop. This shade is discontinued. This shadow I've been working on since March, so just two months. I have used it more than 15 times. I do have the option to roll a shadow out after 15 uses if I want to, but I don't really want to roll this out yet. I have quite a big dip going. It's a really cute color for the spring and summer, so I do plan to keep this in until I hit pan. 
I think I maybe could hit pan in the next month, but it's, you know, it's kind of a deep pan. I feel like I'm not that close to hitting pan, so we'll just have to see, but I'm enjoying that. I like to just pop that on the inner corner. It also goes really nicely with that copper shade. I really do like that pairing of like a bronzy copper and a mint green. Um, and I did one of my kind of go-to looks ever since having both of these in the Pan Those Eyeshadows project is, um, I'll pop it on the screen here, but it's basically the mint green on the inner third of the lid, the copper in the center, and then the taupey matte color, one of those two that I'm now rolling out on kind of the outer corner. Very simple, really pretty kind of unexpected color combo, but I really like that pairing. So that's been kind of my go-to if there's a day where I don't know what other eyeshadow look to do, I'll just kind of do something along those lines. So that has been really fun. And then the, fi the fifth shade that I rolled in at the beginning of this month in my last update was the shade Underwater from the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. And I did use this a handful of times. I, use it f I used it five times this month, so you're not going to see a ton of progress. But I did do a look where I put it all over my lid just for a very dramatic, smoky look. I, I pretty much put that all over the lid from inner to outer corner. Then I tapped some of La Playa, the lighter mint green, on the inner part of my lid in the inner corner, a little bit up into that inner crease. I topped my lid with a shade from the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette, the shade Tiger's Eye, which is kind of like a rose gold topper, just to add some extra pizzazz. I don't remember what I used in the crease. It was just some random like warm mid-tone brown, so <laughs> it's not really important. And then I also took some of Silk, like right around the border between the lid and the crease and just kind of drew like a line of that, kind of almost to cut the crease a little bit. So that was a really fun look, very dramatic. I don't, I don't always, I don't wear really dark, like smoky, dramatic looks like that very often, but it was really fun to play. Um, I like the way it looked in photos, but honestly, in real life, I didn't really like my makeup that day. You know what I mean? Does that ever happen to you guys where like you have a lot of fun playing with makeup and like in theory you like the look, but then when you kind of see it on your face in real life, you're like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> like that is a lot to look at. I don't know. But um, you know, I it was really fun to play and just kind of experiment with all those shadows together. And I did that on a day where I like wasn't really going anywhere. I wasn't filming. So actually I think I did go to the grocery store with that look, but I don't really care. There was another look I did, another very dramatic look. One of those that looks good in that one of those that like I like in pictures but not so much in real life where I did a pretty heavy like lower lash line liner with that underwater shade from e.l.f. kind of a peachy copper eye look I used a combination of the Essence Coral Me Maybe palette on the lid and then um, also that not that Natasha Denona Silk shade and then I used La Playa from Colourpop in the inner corner and I think I used a combination of Mercury and Volatile those two taupey mattes in my crease and outer corner so that was another really fun look I did. And I think those were all of the really kind of noteworthy looks that I did this month with these shadows. But yeah, really just been trying to have fun with these shadows, not put too much pressure on myself to use them all the time um, or like in every single look, but just as often as I feel like it. But anyway, I'm really excited to roll out those two shadows. So before we roll in the new shades, I do wanna say I have made a couple of new like rules or like adjustments to how I'm doing this based on some of your feedback. So number one, I've taken out from my list all of my matte black eyeshadows from my collection because I don't want to pan any of those. I just, I really don't. I actually had a matte black in this project in January from the Shared Planet Polar Bear palette. I used it a ton and that kind of made me realize like I don't really have that much of a desire to hit pan on any of my black eyeshadows. I just don't use them that often anyway. I'll use them occasionally but not not often enough to hit pan. So those I took off the list so they won't have a chance of getting chosen. And I've also decided from now on, if I roll in a shade that is already very similar to one of my other shades, like for example, we had Volatile and Mercury, those were very similar colors. I'm gonna give myself the option to roll in a different shade instead, just to make things more fun. I just feel like it gets kind of boring to have two shades that are so close together in tone. So let's start by picking one from Norvina. Okay, so there are seven shadows in here that we're gonna choose from because um, we're not choosing from any of the ones that have pan and we're also not gonna be choosing from volatile, so that leaves all the rest of the shades. So I'm just going to draw a number from one to seven and I'll have them be numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's see what we get. All right, I got two. Okay, so that is the shade Drama. That's this deep purple. And I've said before, I don't really care to hit pan on this shade, but I do still want to challenge myself to use this shade, even though it's not one that I reach for all the time. 
So that's what that looks like. It's just a very deep purple, not the kind of shade I wear very often, but um, of course I can wear it as a liner. And I just want to kind of experiment with it and see if maybe there are some ways that I might enjoy using it. So yeah, I'm probably not going to hit pan on this shade, but I will at least try to meet that 20 use goal before I roll something else in. The next shadow I'm rolling in, I'm going to pick from 2 to 276 because I do have a header in my Excel sheet. So let's see. I got 125. Ooh, okay, that's exciting. Okay, I'm excited about this because this is one of my favorite shades in my whole collection. This is from the Clarity Cosmetics Somer Amazing palette, and it is the shade O Ship, which is such a beautiful shimmer. It is just the most glisteny, shifty, textured, stunning shimmer. I mean, just look at that. Just, just look at that. Wow. Okay, I'm excited to work on that shade. I have no idea how long that would take to hit pan on. I've never hit pan on any of my Clarity shadows. Um, and this is also a very interesting texture. It's a very like soft flaky shadow, but I'm really excited to get some use out of that and just see what the progress will look like. So those are gonna be our two new shades. Interesting little duo there, but let's go ahead and swatch the other three shadows that are staying in for another month and then we can get a good look at our new color story. Okay, so here we have our new quintet and if you notice, these are all shimmers, which I'm not mad about. I love shimmers and for comparison, this is our old color story. So yeah, a little bit different, a little bit less brown, which is nice to see. So as always, I always like to create a look with our new quintet at the end of these videos. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna challenge myself to only use these five because that's how I typically like to do it. Even though they're all shimmers, I think I think I can make it work. I'm gonna start out, I really wanna see what silk looks like topped with O Ship. So let me just go ahead and start by laying silk all over my lid. I'm essentially just putting this all over the lid and I am going to blend it up into the crease as well since we don't have any matte shades. This is kind of going to serve as our crease color as well. That is a really pretty shadow. All right, then I'm just taking a small crease brush. This is the A502 from the Angie Hot and Flashy and BK Brushes collection. And I'm just going to use that to blend out the edge there. I kind of want to try, I haven't done this before, I kind of want to try using La Playa as a little bit of a transition color. I don't know. Let's just see. It's a very sheer shadow, um, but you can build it up to be a little bit more opaque. I'm just going to blend that along the edge. I'm kind of thinking this is going to be a little bit of like a messy shadow look, like on purpose. Um, you know, kind of just playing with some fun textures, not necessarily aiming for like the most precise look ever, throwing some unexpected shades together. This could go really well or could go really, really poorly, <laughs> but let's just see. Yeah, I feel like that's not even like super obvious that I did that because I applied it with like a diffused brush anyway, but... That's there. So I want to take a little bit of Underwater now from Earth and Ocean, that turquoise, and kind of softly use this to carve out the outer corner. Just, just very softly. I don't want to, this is a very pigmented shade, so I'm just going to kind of gently use that to define this area. And we're going to top the lid with that clarity shade. I know I said lightly and I just <laughs> piled on a lot of that, but oh well. Um, it is going to get kind of covered up a little bit by that topper, so just blending out the edges of that with that same detail crease brush. Don't know how well it goes with my earrings and everything, but <laughs> we can address that at the end. So next, let's grab our O Ship shade, and I'm just going to tap this on the lid. The best way to use these shadows is just to tap, like just one tap of the finger, build slowly because these have a very kind of flaky texture. So you really don't want to go overboard. And I'm just going to tap this 
all over the lid. Not really going for precision here. I'm just kind of letting all the shades run together. And I really like how this shadow almost has like a wet glossy look to it. So it's almost making me look like I have like one of those editorial glossy eye looks going on. <laughs> and I'm even bringing that up like into the crease, above the crease, I'm just letting it take up space. That's kind of cute. That's kind of fun. Okay, so finally, you may be wondering, what are you gonna do with that deep purple? Well, this might be a bit of a cop-out, but I'm gonna use this very lightly on my lower lash line, just very lightly. It's probably gonna end up looking more like brown anyway. Kind of focusing that on the outer corner. I may even put a little bit of that on the upper outer corner too. Yeah, I'm gonna take some of that up here as well. All right, and I'm just gonna finish this off with mascara. I'm not gonna do any liner. I feel like the look has plenty of definition as it is. And I'm just going in with my Charlotte Tilbury Push Up Lashes Mascara. All right, on the lips, I'm gonna do kind of a classic lip combo with my Minted Peach Lip Pencil and my BK Beauty Lipstick in Kindness. Okay, so that's the finished look. I actually really like this look. That um, Oh Ship shade just, I feel like it just makes this look because that just kind of ties everything together, the green, the gold, the copper, all of that, ties it all together so well and gives the whole look this beautiful, like almost wet glimmer. So. I'm very happy, and I actually feel like it, it goes pretty well with my shirt and earrings. You know, with the peach, the green, like it all kind of goes together in a weird way. What a fun video to film. I always love filming these. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. My channel is really all about just getting creative with your existing makeup collection, having fun with what you already have. So be sure to subscribe if that sounds like fun to you. Um, I'll leave my whole Pan Those Eyeshadows playlist below if you want to catch up on old videos. But otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!